Hello, I'm Adam Saruja from University of Buffalo, and I will present this work on motive-driven dense subgraph discovery in directed and labeled networks. In this work, we consider the problem of dense subgraph discovery, which has many applications in real-world networks. And it is often a good proxy also for graph clustering, because if you find a dense subgraph in a given network, it usually has a pretty good cut. Um, literature is rich for simple and directed networks. There are numerous methods. However, uh, in order to handle heterogeneous networks where edges are directed, and or nodes and edges have some labels like categorical labels, numerical labels. Uh, it is not clear how to find dense subgraphs in those contexts. It's, it's not even clear how to define the density uh, to begin with. Uh, so in order to handle this problem, we basically use motifs, which help us define the density in the form of like average motif degree, we, we, we basically look for the number of motifs in a given subgraph and normalize it with respect to the number of nodes uh, in the subgraph. Motifs are in general fundamental building blocks in the organization of real world networks. They capture the higher order relationships and also can be labeled or directed. Um, if you go for the edge directions or node edge labels, the spectrum of the motifs are getting pretty wide, uh, which is kind of a disadvantage. And it's also hard to unify all of those things in a single theoretical framework. However, uh, their customizable nature and also the possibility to find dense subgraphs with respect to a given motif is uh, very promising. So we basically decided to use motifs to find dense subgraphs in heterogeneous networks. Um, so our idea is to look at the participations of small motifs and larger motifs. And to formalize this, we consider a pair of motifs, M and N, I'm going to call small and large motif uh, for those two. M is always a subset of N. And we find the subgraphs where each M participates in many Ns, okay? So this is inspired by the core and trust decompositions in simple and directed uh, networks. Uh, and in this context, we both motifs M and N can have edge directions or categorical labels on nodes and edges. In this work, we do not consider the numerical labels like the weights. Uh, this is for feature work. Uh, and one important notion in this context is the motif hypergraph. So we construct a hypergraph where the small motif instances from the nodes and the large motif instances from the hyper edges. And we connect the node to a hyper edge if it's part of it. Uh, and in general, the motif of interest, that motif of in, the dense subgraphs for which the, den, uh, for which the uh, motif is asked is always the larger motif M. Uh, more formally, we define this framework as quark decomposition. So given a graph and a pair of motifs, M and N, let H be the motif hypergraph as I described. K quark is, is defined as the connected and maximal sub hypergraph, where each M instance participates in at least K N instances. Uh, just like the core and trust number, we define the quark number of a small motif M as the largest value of K such that M belongs to a non-empty K quark. Uh, to give an example, here I denote, uh, I, I give an M and N, M is a unidirectional edge, N is a, a cyclic triangle, and our input graph is this. Uh, so according to this graph and those two pairs, the hypergraph is denoted here. Um, we have basically all the edges at the bottom and the, all the acyclics at the top as the hyper edges. Uh, and here we have a two quark marked in pink and the entire hypergraph is a one quark. Uh, I show both on the right. Uh, so this framework is nice, but it has some limitations when we need to address. The first thing is uh, what if there is only one M in an M? Uh, what I mean is, uh, for instance, let's say this 
um, is a bidirectional edge. Okay? And in, by the way, we always consider a bidirectional edge as a single atomic unit in this work. Uh, so if M is a bidirectional edge and N is given as that triangle, uh, which we call R plus, then the hypergraph uh, with respect to this M and N and for any given graph will always have the hyper edges with size of only one. And this is not good. This does not give any uh, non-trivial structure and we want to avoid this. So in order to uh, avoid this kind of uh, hypergraphs, we always consider the small motif M has vanilla. In other words, we do not consider any labels or any labels on its nodes and edges. And also we do not consider the directions on its edges. Uh, same for the same graph, same large motif M. Now we do this uh, vanilla motif M. And with respect to that directionless edge, we construct the hyper edges and the uh, nodes at the bottom, which now gives a non-trivial structure. Uh, also, as a practical instantiation, we always we choose to uh, select M as an edge. The reason is we, we assign quark number to each small motif M and set of M's basically denotes this, uh, the subgraph. So if we consider the set of edges, we can have the overlapping subgraphs where two K quarks are overlapping at some nodes, okay? Uh, so that's why we always chose to uh, go with an edge. Another interesting problem in this context is uh, in heterogeneous network, like in directed networks, if you look at the nodes, uh, the participation of one node in a given larger motif can be in different ways. In other, in other words, M has different roles in its participations uh, in larger motif Ms. Uh, this is known as orbits actually. Uh, for this particular pair of uh, motifs M and N, uh, there are two orbits here. Uh, orbits are basically defined on a topological uh, connectivity. If you look at this uh, triangle here, the nodes at the bottom both have the same connectivity structure. Each has a bidirectional edge and outgoing edge, uh, but the top node has a different structure. So in this case, we have two orbits, uh, top and the bottoms. And in the bottom orbit, we have two nodes. Uh, so we want to distinguish the participations where M is serving in different orbits. Uh, and in order to do that, we define this orbit degrees, the number of large motifs that contain a small motif where the small motif is in a specific orbit, okay? And we adapt our k-quark definition accordingly. The role aware k-quark is just like the k-quark. The only difference is M's orbit is the same in, in all of its participations. In other words, orbit degree of each M is at least k. Uh, to give an example, uh, here we define M as an edge and as an acyclic. This is a given graph. This is the hypergraph. Uh, the quark numbers are denoted. Those uh, six edges have quark number of two. If we uh, ignore the roles and do the, the first quark definition, k quark basically gives us those two things. One quark, the entire graph, and two quark is those four nodes. However, if you look at those, some of those nodes, for instance, this uh, four, four serves as red node in some of its participations and serves as the blue node in some other participations. And that's what we call the role confusion. And we want to avoid that. And uh, it's possible to do that by the role of a k quarks. Uh, here on the right, I'm showing this. Showing this, there are three roll away one quarks here where each node, each edge has only one orbit in all of the participations in a given one quark. Um, algorithmically peeling algorithm works for quark decomposition, just like the core and trust decomposition and all the existing optimizations for peeling algorithms are applicable, which is a very nice thing. So we did a very comprehensive experimental evaluation for this work. Uh, I, I will only mention a few of them. Uh, we did experiments on directed networks, signed directed networks and not labeled networks. Uh, we compared our results with respect to several baselines, including the motive clustering work, uh, 
very nice work from Benson et al. Um, and also our prior work on Nicholas decomposition, which only works on simple untracked graphs. And in our comparisons, we use we used several metrics. Uh, so with respect to motif clustering, uh, which basically optimizes the motif conductance, uh, we compared our results with respect to the motif conductance and also the average motif degree. Uh, as expected, motif clustering gives pretty good results for the conductance. Uh, and quartic decomposition, on the other hand, gives smaller subgraphs, but with a higher average motif degree. In general, we found out that motif clusters are big due to the top-down partitioning scheme, but the quarks are smaller thanks to this bottom-up decomposition and uh, can, can capture the uh, small scale between 10 nodes and 100 nodes pretty good. Uh, we also compare those two algorithms on a use case on a food for a food web analysis. Uh, so we basically chose this out plus triangle uh, and the classifications of the on a given floor the food web network uh, with quartic decomposition and also motif clustering. Uh, Quartic decomposition consistently gives better classifications than the motif clustering with respect to both classification schemes and also all for all the metrics. Uh, furthermore, we tried out these rollaway quark numbers when uh, the motif is like an acyclic. In this acyclic, you can consider the white node, for instance, as the prey, which is uh, basically eaten by the black and the gray, and the black is the predator and the gray is kind of the balance. And turns out the predator nodes are mostly the birds, the ducks, here on and grebe, and the preys are uh, some kind of fish and some shrimps and zooplankton. And we also uh, find uh, those nodes who are dominantly balanced, which are uh, a lot of types of fishes like uh, sardines and moara. Uh, Another comparison we did is with respect to direction of Louis methods, like the trust decomposition. And for this, I chose this Edinburgh asso uh, bird association network. Um, so basically, there is an edge from one node to another if that word reminds that other word. Uh, so this subgraph, for instance, about uh, space astronomy is obtained by the two, three nucleus decomposition or in other words, trust decomposition. And if you look at each word here and look at the um, K quarks by different motifs, we find different contexts. For instance, Implus gave diff three different contexts for those words. One is in the astronomy uh, context. The other is more like the religious context because it's, it's basically coming from this universe or space kind of things that may have different meanings in different contexts, and also some uh, a subgraph in the holiday theme. Likewise, cycle plus and out, cycle plus plus and out plus gave different contexts. So in overall, we were able to ob uh, obtain diverse subgraphs uh, by, diff by using different motifs, which was not possible if you just go with a direction of Lovius uh, method. Uh, so the last experiment is very interesting. Uh, here we used, uh, Facebook 100 data set where genders serve as not labels, only female and male were available as the genders. And our aim was how to find gender balanced dense subgraphs, even when the graph itself is imbalanced. Uh, here, uh, we compared our method with respect to label of reviews, nucleus decomposition method, and we tried out two cases, when small motif M is edge and the N is triangle, and also M is triangle and is four click. Here I'm just showing different uh, variations with female and male nodes. So the interesting thing is uh, for the network with uh, like 25% female, we were able to obtain subgraphs where the average female ratio is around 50% or even 51.6% with this uh, triangle four click variant. On average, like, 40% uh, was the average female ratio, but we were able to find subgraphs that has 54.7% female thanks to our quark decomposition with this triangle and four click methods. Uh, so in conclusion, we proposed this uh, framework, principled approach for multiple dense subgraph discovery. It's versatile, efficient, and extendable. And we had some feature works about the numerical node edge, not, uh, edge and labels and some other things. Uh, the code is available. Uh, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.